Good evening, gardening friends. It is now Saturday. It's still Saturday. I wrapped up the other episode, uh, or episode 20, and uh, I've decided that I'm going to transplant these uh, strawberries, but the recommendations that from research were to actually try and plant them in the evenings. They have overnight to sort of acclimate to the soil rather than getting burned right away. So that's what I'm doing. I've planted one of the two, and I'm going to plant another one here. Now, uh, I've gone through a little bit of a thing trying to figure out what I'm going to do in terms of trying to make sure these succeed. So you'll find another episode, a special episode, where I actually go through some experimentation and talk about these strawberry plants. Uh, just to keep it short, though, for this episode, I'm only covering the actual transplant. I did want to show you what the uh, strawberry is looking like. One of the problems I had when I did the, I actually called it a post-mortem on the uh, one that died, uh, was that I noticed that the, uh, I couldn't really see any evidence of roots, especially in the peat pot, and uh, I really kind of am suspect of peat pots for certain plants. I think they're good for others, but not for all. Uh, but this one, I can clearly see the roots on here. So I'm going to spread them out just a little bit to kind of get them going. I'm hoping that disturbing the roots is not going to be a problem for me. I'm going to try and just sort of spread them out a little bit and drop that puppy in there and fill it back in. And once I get it all filled in, I'm going to go ahead and mulch around it. Now what I did was I took some of the uh, soil that I already had in the box here and I sifted it. Uh, you can look in some of my other videos to see what I, how I'm doing this, that sifting. But it basically just separates the finer particles from some of the bigger ones. This is a sort of... Uh, well, it's a popular name brand potting soil that I happen to put in here. Uh, I generally use the cheap stuff because I am the budget gardener, but they tend to have a lot of bark pieces in them or some kind of wood product. Uh, so really what I'm doing is separating that out. Oops. Wow. Okay. So hopefully you can see that. And that's what I'm going to spread. Okay. It probably doesn't look too different uh, because the mulch that I'm using is really based on the same soil which has the same moisture content so you're not going to see a big difference but that is done um, I also found that as I was putting the mulch around I was burying the plants so I had to actually pull them back out a bit lift them up a little bit and get some soil underneath them so I'm hoping I haven't left a gap in there an air gap but everything should have good contact with the soil I've got the mulch in there and hopefully these strawberries will survive so now that was two of my six pack. Uh, I decided, first I was going to plant all six of them in that one planter, but I've decided that since the cucumber that was sitting in this particular large planter, this section of the large planter has died, <sighs> um, I'm going to go ahead and plant a couple of strawberries here and a couple just beyond it in the next section. So I'll go ahead and come back when I got those done. All right, folks, so that's got all four of the remaining strawberries from the six-pack planted. I didn't do anything else, really, to prepare the soil in these two sections of the large planter. I did do a little bit more preparation in terms of the other planter, or at least I attempted to. And if you look, you'll see another special episode where I did a bunch of experiments. I'll probably call it strawberries and experiments. Um, so for these, uh, my only fear about them continuing to grow and surviving the transplant and all the rest of that would be whatever else I've had planted in those particular sections in the past because I know some plants are more susceptible than others to whatever, however the soil was left when you pull pre a previous crop out. Unfortunately, not much grows up here. Um, and the one on the right is actually just across from my air conditioner, so it's going to get a pretty good blast of heat when it's hot out. Um, but we'll see. I mean, I've got them in three different locations, so we'll see how each one survives. It'll actually be a good sort of experiment or, or a good set of data in terms of the conditions in which I can actually successfully grow strawberries. So that's it for today's update. Uh, I don't think I've got an... Oh, one other thing was uh, 
that I had noticed when I was doing some of my research that there are some other plants that are good companions to strawberries, so I may try to plant some of those since I've got three now three planters with strawberries in them and nothing else. I don't want it to be an all strawberry garden here, so we'll see what else we can do and I'll wrap it up here for today. Good morning gardening friends. It's now Saturday and once again I've been busy all week so this is my only update. Um, not a whole lot has happened with the garden but let me go ahead and show you the highlights. First of all in the big planter we've got the strawberry plants which I planted about a week ago today and they are surviving very nicely. Um, we've had a fair amount of heat this week but uh, you know, I didn't know, I don't know what killed the last one, but these are doing really nicely. The peppers just keep getting taller and taller. I'm not sure how tall they're supposed to get before we actually see signs of fruit, but uh, they're still alive and that has me really happy. The lemon cucumber is still alive and starting to develop flowers. If you look really carefully, you should be able to see a little yellow flower about dead center of your screen. Let me see if I can point to it here. Right there. And there's another one on another branch, and looks like one tried to develop on the third branch. So I got flowers. That's, a, that's progress. That's getting us closer to actual fruit. These are the strawberries in the triple wide planter, and if you look carefully, I hope you can see there's actual strawberries developing. Actually, quite a few of them. So, again, one more thing to make me happy. So, I came out here not having really looked at it much in the last few days, and every little bit's making me happier. This is a different angle on the basil plant, which actually needs some water today. But, um, I don't know if you, how well you can see it, but there's, it's actually going to flower here, so I'm going to have to pinch that off to encourage further growth. But, I got basil. This isn't a veggie, it's actually a marigold, but I don't know how well you can see. I've got this little cluster right here. What I did there, because I needed more marigolds and uh, the six packs didn't have quite enough to put one there, I actually took a dead head off of one of the other marigolds and just planted the whole head. I was just kind of curious to see if I plant the whole head, are they all going to try and sprout or how does that work? So that's why we've got so many actual, uh, well, it probably doesn't look like much now, but it's the beginnings of something and uh, it's just interesting to try. We'll follow that. Now let's talk tomatoes. Uh, we've got the hard rock tomato doing nicely, getting bigger and bigger, and now I'm finally seeing evidence of actual flowers starting to grow. So I'm hoping the camera has focused right here. There's got some flowers right starting right there. So, I mean, you don't see any yellow yet, but you're actually seeing the beginnings of flowers. So I'm excited to get uh, some hard rock tomatoes out of this thing. I've never tasted one, never seen one. So we'll see what that tastes like. And while we're talking progress, we've got the patio tomato, and there's a couple of tomatoes on there which have now turned red. So I'm going to enjoy those. Remember how the yellow pear tomato was giving me oh, one or two here or there? This week I've been watching this and I'm going to look forward to enjoying quite a few yellow pear tomatoes. So that takes us to the old pool house and that was one of the projects this week that kept me busy was finishing repainting uh, at least the body of it. I still need to paint uh, the fascia boards, but um, it just looks that much better having these planters up against a solid color of paint instead of various bits of peeling and this and that. So this will buy us a couple of years on uh, before we have to do any kind of real repair on this building, um, but that's really kind of getting beyond the gardening. That's really more about the management thing. Um, just trying to make sure that everything around here stays looking good while I work on my garden. Unfortunately, in all the craziness, some things got watered more frequently than others. Um, I really meant to try and stay on top of it, but uh, you might be able to see that planter on the left of the screen. The big marigold that was in there 
seems to have suffered quite a bit. Um, I'll go ahead and give them a really good shot of water today and we'll see how much they bounce back. Despite all that, uh, the snapdragons seem to be starting to bounce back and I need to actually do some research and see if I need to cut off the old wood to allow the new wood to come back in or if you can get flowers back on the old wood. Uh, meanwhile, in that middle plant, there's actually still quite a few seeds available, so I need to get to harvesting that and dealing with it all. That takes us to these roses, which are, the plants are getting bigger. Um, flowers are coming out, but then passing fairly quickly. So I need to figure out if there's something wrong. Um, I think this week I've not been going with the deep watering and then leaving it alone kind of thing. I've just been kind of shooting everything with water just because I knew think these you know, plants in general need water and I was trying to keep from letting everything die while I was crazy busy. There's one lonely plant in the white pot here. The four o'clocks just got to looking so ugly that I finally pulled them. So what I'll probably do is plant some wildflowers in here and we'll see what decides to pop on those. That takes us out to the pergola area where some things are growing better than others. Again, I've been trying to give them fairly consistent water this week, though some things probably want to see uh, deeper watering. So we'll just have to try and get back on that this coming week. Meanwhile, there is one lonely flower on the uh, trellis. Up behind the pool house, and I'm hoping this comes through, the nasturtiums in these two, which were the newest ones, have really exploded, so I'm happy about that. I haven't covered much in the north courtyard. Um, there's only a couple of plants that seem to be surviving, so maybe here what I'll do is throw some more wildflower seed and see what comes of that. Meanwhile, though, I mean, plants from last year are actually still growing. I need to clean them up a bit. Uh, there's more than just those few black-eyed Susan flowers. Uh, I could pan up, but you'll get dizzy. So I think I'll just leave it at that. And finally, we come to rest on the artichoke planter. Uh, while I had to move a bunch of things around, one thing I realized was that the artichoke plant, the main stalk, which you can see on the right side of the planter in the back there, uh, it was just, it was a lot, it was long, but it wasn't going up, so I decided to go ahead and train it on a bamboo pole, and we'll see if that helps the plant. Also, I noticed I had aphids on there, so I went ahead and hit it with some insecticidal soap, and uh, hopefully that'll help. Did a lot of deadheading on those petunias <laughs> several times this week. In fact, actually, I think I got aphids on those, too, but uh, we'll just keep battling, and uh, we'll wrap up the episode here. So this is the Budget Gardener saying, may your thumb be green.